Good morning, everybody. I'm John. This is Shimoda Life. If you're a regular viewer, uh, you will not recognize uh, the scenery behind me because I'm not on the mountain today. Uh, if you're not a regular viewer, uh, Shimoda Life is me on a piece of property uh, that I bought a few years ago on a mountain near the town of Shimoda. Um, I bought it about, as I said, three years ago. It's about three acres, and I'm carving out a place to live on it. And for the last year, I've been up there logging and clearing and grading and doing all sorts of mucking around and getting ready for a, trying to create a level spot for a house to sit on and then eventually to build the house. Well, um, I'm taking a break from the mountain right now to practice my house building. And I'm really excited about this. So it's going to be a new project and it's going to take a while. Uh, so I don't know how much I'm going to fit into each video. Um, so, so you have to bear with me on that, it's undecided yet, but I'm starting to build a timber frame tiny house. I'm really excited about this because, you know, as if you've watched a couple of my videos, you know that the, the only timber framing I've done is a couple of sawhorses, which you see right there. Uh, I'm going to use these sawhorses to support the big timbers that I need to build a timber frame structure. And um, because I'm building a timber frame structure by myself on the mountain, I need to get in some practice. So uh, this project, this timber frame tiny house project is the practice that I need. And you're going to see me in several different um, uh, sets of clothing because this is taking days and days and days. But the first part of this is m measuring and marking. There's a lot of it. Because a timber frame structure doesn't use nails or screws, everything kind of fits together in a joint, um, you know, you got to be precise. So there's a lot of measuring and marking. And I'm doing that, first of all, to get into practice, uh, but second of all, because it's really important to measure it accurately before you start cutting it. These beams are big. Uh, the biggest ones I have are 8 by 10s And you don't want to cut off too much of that and then suddenly have a useless piece of 8 by 10 lumber on your hands. So, uh, let's get started. A uh, bunch of measuring and marking today, too. Um, I will meet up with you on the end of this and we'll see how it went, okay? Okay, before I get started in earnest, let me point out the book that I'm using. Uh, this is Will Beam's book, uh, Timber Frame, Learn to Timber Frame. And it includes uh, the plans uh, for, th for this build. It's a 12 by 16 cabin in the book, and I've made mine smaller. It's an 8 by 12, so I've had to adjust um, quite a few measurements. But I'm going to be referring to this throughout all of the build, and you'll see it often. First things first, the sills. The very bottom um, support structure that sits on top of the foundation. That's what we're measuring first. Yesterday I managed to get the first sill marked out, I think, completely. Today I've got to take the second sill, which is on the opposite side. These are the long sills for the 
um, bottom of the house. And um, I did the, the first one, the west one, yesterday. I've got to do the east one now, and it's going to be the mirror image. So I've put the yesterday's work on the sawhorses, and I'm not going to use it for exact reference, but I'm going to refer to the lines to just, to just hopefully help me um, speed me along in the process. So just marking out the one log yesterday took about four hours, and you know I've got quite a few logs to do. So. Um, but, you know, that was the first one. It's going to get much shorter, much shorter. And when I have one of them done, doing the second one should take a lot less time. So like I said, things get a little bit easier. Um, the first uh, marking yesterday took me about four hours. This one took me just over an hour. It's just going to get easier from here on out. Got to be careful and not get cocky because I made a couple of simple mistakes. I had to go back and scribble out lines. But um, still, 25% um, of the time taken versus uh, yesterday's job, exact same job. So yes, keep going like this and we'll be productive. We move on to posts. I've made uh, my own little measurements and references. I've identified all of the posts. Uh, a, along the north wall. B, along the south wall. And then one, two, three, running from east to west. So this corner post is B3. This corner post is B1. A3, A1, etc., etc. You know, I'm, I'm an amateur, so I'm doing the only, learning the only way I know how books. And what I would recommend to anybody following along is spend months and months beforehand reading books. Um, there's just so much to know. I mean, it's, it's actually quite a simple activity once you get into, you know, uh, measuring and cutting your, your, your timber. I think it's, it's quite simple, um, but there's so many different complicated steps. So, um, you know, I've got five or six or seven different books and I've spent probably 12 months now um, just reading uh, in my spare time and, and making notes and marking things that I have to kind of remember. I'm still going to make a ton of mistakes right now, but um, I think this is the only way forward. So, um, as you see me consulting my book, you know which one I'm using and, um, you know, pick your own uh, and learn how to timber frame. So I'm working on the post right now, trying to follow the plans as closely as possible, except my posts are a different size, so I have to make some adjustments. But I just want to lay out, I just want to show you the, the different cuts. First of all, I've got a stub tenon at the bottom that'll sit into the sill. Then I've got a mortise for the girt, which is uh, just a horizontal brace. Then I've got the mortise for the uh, brace itself, the 45 degree vertical brace. Uh, this is the bottom of it, the top of it will go into a sill beam. And then I've got the tie beam. The tie beam is uh, pretty close to the ceiling uh, of, of the shed. And then at the very top I've got the upper tenon which will go into the, um, the upper sill. I think that's the wrong word. But anyway, I've got these uh, 
five different units to lay out. The last one I'm going to do right now is what is called a dovetail tenon uh, or a dovetail mortise. The wedged half dovetail. The wedged half dovetail. That's next. That's what I'm laying out right now. I didn't make much progress on those posts yesterday. The particular joint that I was trying to achieve um, couldn't figure it out. So I did decide that I'm gonna not use that joint. I'm gonna go with a much simpler one, a housed through mortise. And for those, well, you'll see when I get to it. But anyway, I put the posts away for now. Um, they're, they're big and heavy and they're a lot of work. And so I'm gonna come back to them another day. What I've got now in front of me are the floor joists. I'm going to tackle the floor joists today. They are relatively simple. There's five of them. The center one has a little bit of finagling on the ends, but the, um, the other four are very basic. You essentially cut a pocket in the floor sill and you just make sure this is sized appropriately and you drop it in. It's a very, very simple joint. So I'll get these out of the way, these five. When I finish these, shouldn't take more than a couple of hours, then I've got the whole floor system done. So on these floor joists, I just wanna show you a little a detail on them. These are all four by six inch uh, joists. And my Sawyer is really, really good about getting the cuts very accurate and very straight and very true. So they're all true 90 degree angles on every face. It's very easy to choose the reference face, the adjacent face. But also I just want to share with you a detail on the, um, the type of wood we're getting. This is called a boxed heart or a center heart um, cut. Meaning these were, this is the total tree essentially. And um, you can see that just the, the rounded outer edges have been cut and the center of the, um, the growth rings is clearly visible in the center of the log. Back for another day. I'm gonna take off the tarps because we had a little rain and then it's working on those posts. Well, I managed to get through six, uh, the posts. A little bit wonky. I have difficulty visualizing the building before it's built still, even though I'm looking at a picture. And that's a, that's a learned skill, I understand that, so I've gotta, gotta just keep working on it. But I do notice that you know the more days that I come back, of course, like everything, the more I do it, um, the quicker I get and the more intuitive it gets. So by the end of this build, I'm gonna be ready for a house. Okay, focusing on the um, braces now, the, uh, the diagonal uh, braces that will go all through the um, upper part of the um, tiny house. They're 
the book is suggesting a 30 inch brace. So that means the, if you think of the triangle, the A squared plus B squared, and then the hypotenuse. I'm going with a 24 inch um, brace. So that means I have to figure out the hypotenuse uh, in order to know the length of the brace that I'm gonna measure then cut. And it, I think this is fairly simple math. Um, it's just that I haven't done it in so long. Um, so, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We all remember that. Um, and then I just took what is, uh, I used my um, calculator on the iPhone and I came to um, c squared would be 33.941 inches. Um, because I'm not using decimals, I'm using everything on the, on the, um, the imperial system. That's my, my squares and, and measurements are on the imperial system. So what is that in inches? Um, quick calculation, trial and error, um, 15 sixteenths. So check it, uh, a squared, 24 squared plus 24 squared should equal 33.94 squared, it does. Okay, so um, a little bit of simple math um, and I'm not using a 42 and 7 sixteenths brace as they suggest, I'm using a 33 and 15 sixteenths brace. Okay. <laughs> 